Remember the Congress came into power in Karnataka just a few weeks ago with a massive victory across the state. They promised to bring in five poll promises across the state. Right now on your screens you can watch BJP workers gather at Freedom Park in Bengaluru. They're staging a statewide agitation against the Congress government for one of those promises. Essentially they're saying that the Congress government has added terms and conditions to their pre-poll guarantee promises that they made. Remember, one of the uh, promises that they made uh, was the promise of Griha Jyoti, as it was called, the promise of 200 units of free power. This is something that uh, the Siddharamaya government had promised would come into flow on Friday. Now, my colleague Akshara is with us to bring us more context. Akshara, when the BJP is saying that the Congress has added terms and conditions to their poll promises, what are they talking about? Well, you see, uh, first during the election campaign, there was no conditions mentioned as such by the Congress party. But right now, taking the financial conditions into consideration, uh, it, it stated that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the average of every year will be taken into consideration, plus 10 units will be provided. So then the calculation will be done for the uh, 200 units of free electricity. But if it exceeds 200 units of electricity, then once again, uh, uh, you know, they'll, be, they'll have to charge and they'll have to pay the bill. People have to pay the bill. So that's one condition. And uh, this 200 units of free electricity, will be available just for uh, no, one household. Uh, it will not be available for any other household. Just one connection per household. So that's what the condition states, which is quite reasonable. And uh, now you have the, BJ, uh, the BJP here protesting at uh, the Freedom Park here in Bengaluru, which uh, states that the, pro the, pro the uh, Congress government, which had promised 200 units, is now providing 80 units. And also, BJP is pointing out the fact that there is an increase in the electric tariff, uh, you know, which was recently passed by the Karnataka Electricity Commission, uh, regulated Commission, which stated that there will be increase in the 70 paise per electric or uh, per unit of electricity. The BJP stated that it's Congress which is doing this, which is increasing the tariff because they want to provide this 200 units of electricity. But on the other hand, Congress says that it is not passed by the Congress party, but it is passed by the uh, the. King RC Karnataka Electricity Regulatory Commission, which was passed during the uh, no, month of May, even when the election results were not out. So this is not the, what Congress is doing. Uh, the BJP is mistaken. So that's what the Congress Party is saying. But once again, BJP here states that the, B, uh, the Congress Party, which is in power now, can object to this and uh, you know, reduce the electricity tariff per unit and uh, you know, ensure that it comes back to normal. So that's what the BJP is saying, and uh, hence they are protesting here at uh, Bengaluru. Yesterday there were multiple protests in different districts but today it, uh, it's taking place in the IT city here. Okay, I want to ask you, Akshara, um, obviously you're surrounded right now by BJP workers who, who will agree with the protest, but what does the average citizen have to say? Do they think that these terms and conditions added by the Congress are in fact reasonable or do they agree with the BJP? What have you found? when you uh, take into consideration what the uh, Congress is saying, few of the people uh, no, still unaware about the you know, technicalities of what is being rolled out. Uh, and uh, it is, oh, no, they fun, while other few find it very reasonable that they can afford to it, but once it's implemented, we will get to know the clear details, how it's being calculated, how it's being done. And uh, no, many uh, people in rural Karnataka are quite unaware about the technicalities which will be you know, rolled out. But uh, Chief, Chief Minister Sidramaya made it very clear that this will be used for personal use only and uh, not for any commercial purpose. Uh, on the other hand, you also had various other schemes like Bhagya Jyoti and other schemes pertaining to electricity and all these other schemes are being merged with the Grah Jyoti scheme. That's what the BJP is also pointing out. When you, when you promised to provide 200 units of electricity, you did not promise that, you did not say that uh, all these other schemes regarding the, uh, pertaining to the electricity and the uh, payment of electric bills so will not be merged with uh, uh, this particular Grah Jyoti scheme. Then why are you doing it now? So that's one of the you know, questions being raised by the BJP. Right, but, but Akshara, what do citizens citizens have to say, I, I'm sure you've spoken to citizens over the last few days too, how are they reacting to this? Well, uh, before the implementation, the citizens are, you know, said that uh, uh, you know it's quite impossible in order to ensure that all the guarantees will be impl uh, implemented. But once again, uh, the Congress government here is pretty much, pretty much confident that they'll be implementing all the guarantees and the financial burden will be taken care of. And when it comes to this, uh, you know, particular Grihad Jyoti scheme, the electricity, you know, 200 units of ele free electricity, uh, the people are quite, you know, uh, uh, st uh, still in doubt whether it will be implemented or not, whether they'll be uh, getting the 200 units. 
units of free electricity. So they are they are still processing it. They are still going through what the technicalities will be. Uh, once it's implemented, we will get in all the clear details and what people have to say about this. But once again, in the run-up to the 2023 elections, these are the you know uh, schemes. These are the guarantees that help the Congress come to power. Uh, and they recently concluded 2023 assembly elections. Uh, Akshara, tell us more about the history of Karnataka when it comes to different parties making political promises. Are there precedents in the past where political parties have not completed the promises they've come into power with in Karnataka? Well, uh, if you take take into consideration uh, the previous BJP government, uh, it had made various promises, almost uh, around 600 promises, and uh, most of the promises were yet to be completed or not com uh, no, uh, completed uh, fully. And that's what the BJP also uh, you know, pointed out, stating that uh, you know, uh, 600 promises were made and most of the promises were not being completed by uh, fulfilled by the BJP and the Congress government uh, is the, uh, unlike unlike the BJP government, Congress part Congress government uh, is you know determined to fulfill all the promises or the you know anything that have promised in the run-up to the elections that's what the Congress party is uh, uh, you know stating and uh, yes uh, you know there there is no presidents of uh, you know any party coming to power fulfilling all the promises uh, you know uh, in their poll manifesto completing them and executing them and uh, yes so that's that's been the scenario in the state of Karnataka. Okay, Akshara, I'm just going to ask you to stay with us, please. Uh, right now we're going to play out for you what the current Chief Minister of Karnataka, Siddharamaiah, has to say. Take a look. राज्य तक Okay, let's go back to my colleague Akshara. Akshara, we just heard right now from sitting Chief Minister Siddharamaiya. Akshara, uh, tell us, we can also see cows on the screen and I'm, I'm given to understand that one of the things the BJP is also protesting is a Congress Minister's statement that he would repeal the, the anti-cow slaughter laws across Karnataka. Now, Akshara, bring us more context about that because I know that the Karnataka minister who made that statement said that cows were getting old and the anti-cow slaughter law was in fact harming the population of cows across the state because they would be let out by herders, by farmers onto the roads. Is that correct? Can you bring us more context about what we've seen play out after those laws came into play in Karnataka? <laughs> Well, you see, the whole debate surrounding the anti-cow slaughter law erupted after uh, the Karnataka Animal Husbandry Minister uh, no, K. Vinkatesh passed that uh, no, uh, statement stating that, very seen stating that if cow, buffaloes can be slaughtered, why not cows? So this particular statement by the Animal Husbandry Minister, where he gave a hint that anti-cow slaughter law is likely to be repealed, uh, no, created the whole controversy here. As you can see, the visuals opposing this, the BJP is now uh, here uh, at the Freedom Park here protesting against uh, this alleged conspiracy by the Congress to repeal the anti-cow slaughter law. So now they uh, as you can see in the visuals, they got the cattle here and worshipping the cattle, doing puja to it, stating that uh, the cow is the uh, mother of uh, Hindu, so it's not right to repeal the anti-cow slaughter law which protects these cows, so that's what they've been stating. But if you uh, take a uh, larger view, the Congress states that, uh, you know, there had uh, yesterday even Chief Minister Sidramaya said that there was already a Karnataka Anti-Cow Slaughter Act which, uh, you know, gave the, uh, uh, you know, which provided for the slaughter of cows, which are more cows or any really cattle for that matter, which is above 12 years of age or incapable of breeding. So that's what that, that law already existed in Karnataka. Right.